There's a disturbing trend that we've identified going on with guitar buyers. It's something that we sometimes hear in the store. It's that line when you utter, do you have a new one in the box? Sometimes that might not be the best route to take. We're gonna tell you why, stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. And we're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, and you like your videos, or our videos, whoever's videos you want to like. And also, if you want to support the channel, <laughs> check out our uh, uh, Spring Store. That's what it's Swag called. Town. I yeah, Swag. It's, yeah. Uh, it's linked in the description below. And check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. So, we hear it. Actually, I've heard it for about the 10 years that I've worked here. Yeah. Increasingly, you come in, you sit down, you take a guitar off the wall, you play it, we talk to you about the guitar, we go through maybe a number of guitars, you find the guitar that you absolutely love. You say, yep, this is the one, taking it home. Do you have a new one in the box? How many times have you heard that? Oh, every day, for sure. <laughs> every yeah. day. And as a seasoned, ham-fisted guitar player, um, I don't get it. And I, I want to talk a little bit about that problem. Yeah. Um, it's actually, it can become a little bit worse than that. So for one, you have guys who say, you know, I want this model of guitar, I want a new one in the box, like the one that's hanging on the wall is just a demo model. You also have people that do what's called showcasing, which is you go into a music store in your local town and you try out a guitar maybe a number of guitars, you talk with the sales staff, you find what you like, and then you buy it from an online dealer and have it shipped to you. The most egregious example, I actually, I actually witnessed someone do that in the store. They set the guitar down, got their phone out, and ordered it from an online retailer. And I was just like, man, that's really terrible. And my, I'm just, I'm throwing you guys under the bus if you do that. That's terrible. You've wasted every single person's time in that store who spent that time, hopefully, if they're a good dealer, uh, trying to educate you and help you find the right thing, and that's how they make their money. You know, that's how they stay open for business, and you want to go back there, but instead you're buying it from an online retailer, probably so you can get one new in the box. Yeah. What's the problem with that? <clears throat> if you, so there's a couple different things. One, I get it. If you're playing a pedal, if you're sure. trying out something that is more of a commodity, that is every single one is exactly the same. Try out the pedal on the on the sales floor. I will go get you one new in a box when you're sure. ready to take it. Unless you think that that one is, you know, got the special juice. Got the voodoo. If it's a commodity, take it in the box. However, we saw it even, we were just talking about it in a different video, talking about some 814s. Yep. Every single guitar is slightly different. Yep. Even the most mass produced, you know, $150 acoustic import guitar, you can find some that are really perfect right out of the box. Sometimes they need a setup. Sometimes it got smacked in shipping and a string broke on it or there's a crack in it or whatever. Right. It's like if you fall in love with an instrument that you're playing right now and you love it and there are no issues with it, then that's the one for you. Yeah, you fell in love with that instrument, you know. So we talk about what's in the box. Maybe it is your future beautiful guitar that you're gonna love forever. Maybe it's buyer's remorse. You know, I understand the conundrum when you don't have a music store at which that you can play things, or maybe the music store is not a good music store. We actually did a video a while back talking about the death of the guitar store, and there were a lot of great comments in there that were very supportive of local guitar stores. There were also a lot of comments of saying, you know what, bad dealers deserve to close, and I agree with that sentiment as well. If, it's a, if you walk into a shop and they ignore you and they don't care and you know whatever, I totally get that. The buying experience is an important aspect of it. We've tried very hard, sometimes we fail. We try to learn from those mistakes. That's just kind of how life is. But to serve you as the musician and the person who's buying an instrument, there are some things like pedals and other electronic items that I think can be commoditized. They are going to be pretty much consistent and the same from one to another. And then there are things that aren't. You know, there's a very, one of my favorite things I ever heard, Rob McGargle 
is head of service at Taylor Guitars. And we were doing a, an event at one of our stores uh, years ago, and a guy brought in his Taylor, and he'd had it for years, and he loved it for years, and it needed a little work done on it, and he was frustrated because I spent all of this money on this guitar. Why doesn't it just stay perfect forever? And Rob had the best response. He said, it's made of wood and steel. It's going to move about. Some things aren't going to be perfect on it. It's just how it is. And I think for those of us who like wooden instruments, there's an expectation that comes with that. Now, it's true that a lot of manufacturers, Taylor probably foremost, uh, are getting more and more consistent in building guitars. And where that does benefit you, the guitar player, is if you don't have a place near you, you can go on our website and you can order a guitar and we will ship it to you like we do for many people and you can rest assured that you're getting a good quality instrument. Okay, that's if you have no way of comparing them. But if you have a way of comparing them, yeah. you should because they're not all the same. Yeah, I think so there's a couple different types of people. One, um, the person that maybe, it means a lot more I think to fall in love and take the one that you like with an acoustic guitar mm-hmm. than an electric guitar. Some exceptions to that, but especially if you're playing a solid color finished Fender Stratocaster, you should be able to play one, fall in love with it, and then find any any of that guitar in the country and get that guitar, and it should be exactly the same. That's rarely the case. It's rarely the case. Rarely the case, but that's one thing. However, I will say that um, people come into our store and we like to put really nice instruments on the floor to show people. Right. So if you're looking at a K24 Builders Edition that's got the coolest flame that we've seen in a whole year and you love that guitar but you want one new in a box, maybe that one doesn't have the same look. Maybe, right. I mean, wood grain varies so much. There are so many differences. And then there's another type of person that I have spoken with here before that will order guitars like special order them, mm-hmm. and we want to make sure this amazing, very expensive guitar is all good. And we open the box and we open it up. We took a picture to send to him, and then we got scolded and told, "No, I don't want that guitar because I wanted it untouched. The, you know, staples still in the box. I'm not taking that." So first of all, let's not even talk about inspection when things arrive and dealer agreements and all sorts yeah, of stuff. Yeah, that's, that's a whole nother subject. That expectation is misplaced. It's just a wrong expectation when buying a guitar. It's it's tough because you also want the local music store or even the big box music store to be able to get these guitars and put them out so people can see them and people can fall in love with them. You will not find any store probably today that has more than two or three, say, triple O 42s. Yeah. Usually a store has zero or they have one. Right. And a lot of these guitars that are really hard to get their hands, you know, get our hands on or for stores to get their hands on, uh, we have one to work with. Yeah. If you like that one, we don't, we don't have a warehouse filled with all the D45s for you to pick from so you can get one in a box. It's just the reality of things. Yeah. So, again... And, and, and when we do, say we have a number... So today we shot a video with this guitar, which yeah. is why I wanted Cooper to hold this, because this is a great illustration of what we're talking about. This is an 814 CE. Okay, It's a Taylor 814 CE. We sell a lot of them. We get a lot of them. We usually have more than one 814 CE in stock at a given time, depending upon supply and, and, and whatnot. Um, when I played this guitar today, Josh, behind the camera, listening in, remarked, That sounds different. That one's just got more (coughs) bass to it. It's just got something. That is a special 814 CE. Thank you, Josh. Um, And that kind of proves the point. Now, if you ordered an 814C on our website and one different from the ship to you, it's going to have that consistent Taylor quality, and you're probably going to be very, very happy with that guitar. If you are in a guitar store, though, and you're playing different guitars, if there's multiples of the same model, you should try them both. You know, going back to the electric guitars you're talking about, so Fishman came up with the Fishman Fluence pickups, which are stacked like Uh circuit boards instead of wire. One of the things, I I heard Greg Koch talking about this, 
and I guess it was from Larry Fishman, who was talking about how pickups are manufactured. And even with winding machines, even with every effort to be as consistent as possible, there's wild inconsistency from one set of electric guitar pickups to the other set of electric guitar pickups, even from the same manufacturer, even with the same specifications. Yeah. Now, maybe that's just to sell Fishman Fluence pickups, okay? Yeah. But maybe there's some truth behind it because you're dealing with wire wrapped around magnets, you yeah. know, which 400 years ago would just sound like witchcraft and magic, you know, in order to make sounds be amplified out of a speaker. And so there is going to be some variation. And like I said, if you have to order one, okay, go with a, a trusted store and a manufacturer that's good quality and warranties and all that stuff. But if you can compare them, you should. And yeah. go the, with home with the one that you fall in love with. And I have a personal story about this. Mm -hmm. My 914 Taylor that I bought from Alamo Music 20 years ago was not my... I was going to buy an 814C. E. That's what I was going yeah. to buy. That's what I've been looking at in their catalog and I'd made up in my mind. That's going to be the guitar. And... Um, then I went in and I played that 914 CE and I fell in love with it. Where'd you get that one? It was at the Babcock store. And yeah. the interesting story about that is it, I would go pay it visits because I couldn't afford the guitar at the time. And then it disappeared one day. And I thought to myself, I'll order one. And then they had changed the specifications and I couldn't order one like that. And I was really bummed and Maurice and I were looking for a guitar for a while and we talked to the tailor rep and he's like, there's one at your other store. It was the same guitar, it had gone on layaway, a guy hadn't gotten it, it come back out of layaway, it was at a different location, it came back over and I bought it. And then it got stolen. <laughs> and I replaced it with an identical model from the same year that wasn't the same. And then I got my original guitar back. Yeah. And, and guess which one I kept? The original one. Yeah. I sold, the, and they were, they were built the same year, they were months apart. Yeah. But they were different. So, go figure. Do you know why I like this specific 814 and why I would choose this one? Why? That's so cool. The birds? The, the little bear claw, bear claw. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's very similar, not at all similar. I got my first Taylor at the Babcock store, 214 CE. I was, you know, I think I was 15 maybe. I was just like, I need a Taylor. I need something good. Got a 214 CE, and it had a crazy amount of bear claw right here. Yeah. And Maurice was like, yeah, if you don't like that, I'm sure I got a new one in a box. I was like, that's why I want that one. That one's so cool. Yeah. When you find something, like, I mean, we talk about great spruce all the time being super silked and just really straight and pretty. But if you're like me, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that makes you fall in love with one specific guitar. It gives it personality right out the gate. And I, it would be hard for me to, if I wanted 814, play this one. It's got something special with the bass. It's just cool. It's got a unique feature on the, the spruce. And I'd be like, all right, give me one in a box that I don't even know if has a weird fret right here. You know, just, it's like, how do you not just fall in love with yeah. the one that's in your hands? But Yeah, I, you know. I don't know. I mean, I think you and I agree. I think there's a lot of guitar players that have that sentiment. There's a lot of new guitar players that I think see these as commodities. And I'm here to tell you they are not refrigerators, okay? Um, they are not custom kitchen uh, delivery. <laughs> delivery. Yay, yay. Uh, they're not microwaves. They, no, they, they are... Uh, unique, different pieces of art that serve as musical instruments. And, you know, if you have no one around you, by all means, order one. But if you can go to a store and, and play one, play one. And if you fall in love with one, don't try to get a different one. Just keep the one that you fell in love with. You know, uh, dance with the one that brought you. <laughs> Absolutely. And, I mean, we've, we see it all the time with people that we come to us from all over the country text, email, whatever, we do it a bunch. We pull out, you know, three different 814s that we have from boxes with detailed photos and videos of every single one. That, I feel like, that's how you can get around that. At least see what we've got yeah. and pick, like, knowing what you're going to get. I, again, if it's a commoditized thing that's a pedal or cables or whatever, you don't have to, you know, try out and buy the floor store use this cable. This cable's the one. But um, yeah, get as much of a visual and, you know, 
auditory kind of understanding of the guitar that will be coming to you. And ideally we will get to a place where quality control wise, everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. And then all you have to worry about is making sure you get something with grain that you like, you know, but again, that's not always the case. Sometimes you get a brand new guitar that needs a setup really, really bad and is unplayable. Like I unboxed a guitar the other day that I kind of wanted and Surprisingly, it needs a setup. It needs a really setup really bad. It could yeah. be that we're just weird. I'm going to tell you a little bit of weirdness about myself. And then, you know, it is what it is. But I laid hardwood floors in my house uh, a few years back. And uh, for everybody who walks in and looks at these hickory floors that I put in my house, they just, like, probably all look the same. Mm -hmm. But there's certain boards that have flame to them mm -hmm. that are my favorites, and I know where they all are. You know? <laughs> You laid out the flame boards in the walkway to your guitar I'm not room. saying I sorted through boxes of wood and picked out the flamed ones and put them in a particular place, but that might have happened. So maybe I'm yeah. just weird. Yeah. One day those floors are going to be pulled up and they're going to be shaped into the back and sides and that'll be... Hickory guitars. That'd yeah. be interesting. So anyways, we'd like to hear your opinion. You know, you guys are the guitar buying public. Um, what do you think? Are guitars commodities and one's just as good as the other? And if you want it sealed in the box, uh, you're confident that that's going to be the perfect guitar to suit your needs? Or do you maybe see share some of our madness and go, no, there's something special in certain instruments. Um, and all I can say is from experience, I've been doing this for about 10 years now. I've played literally thousands of guitars. I've played multiples of the same model um, in our store and at NAMM, at guitar factories, and there have been those guitars that have the magic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ended up buying some of them because they were so special. So, anyways, That's how it goes. Let us know your thoughts uh, in the comments below. And if you're new to our channel, they should do what? You're going to want to subscribe to the channel and you're going to want to uh, turn your notifications on, like this stuff, and then once you're done with all that, go over to alamomusic.com and find the guitars that you want new in a box. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> then we'll ship it to you. Make sure you're sitting in another dealer trying out the guitar and then go to Alamo Music on your phone. Put us on speed dial for that <laughs> Just, one. Just, you, know. you know, you can check out with Apple Pay and we'll send it right to you. So. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.